Well, here we are today at the RD Works Learning Lab, and we're going to try and do something a little bit ambitious. Now, this takes us out of RD Works Learning Lab because we've got to do some preparatory work. Here, I've got a very thin tri wall card. It's quite stiff, and it's the bottom of something like uh, an apple box. What I've done, I've produced an A4 photograph. We're going to cover the back of it with some double sided tape. This is rather heavy duty industrial double sided tape. But I'm sure normal double sided tape will work. It's just going to take probably quite a lot more. So what we have to do is make sure that we stick it on nice and evenly. And the biggest problem is trying to get the next layer close but not too close. And to get the photograph free I'm going to have to cut around the edge of the photograph and there we go. We've got plenty of room here on this card so we don't have to be too worried about it. We've pulled the backing material away from the double sided tape and folded it back. We've put all our pieces of tape down like that and that will hold this end of the photograph off the deck while we approximately line it up. Now we've got so much room here that this is not an important issue in this particular instance but it does stop it from sticking down and it allows you to move it around and then once you've moved it around what you need to do is very carefully from one end smooth it down as you go in small strokes like that so that you push the air away from the area that you're sticking down and then you can gradually pull these pieces of tape back and smooth the air out and there we go we have a bubble free attachment to the card there's our puzzle picture ready now we've got to prepare the puzzle template well here's the puzzle part that I have designed if you look carefully you'll see that um, the horizontal hole at the top and the horizontal tang at the bottom are both in green that's because I've separated them out into different layers and I will go and explain why I've done that here I've drawn an A4 size shape around the outside and then I've made it smaller so that it fits perfectly my hexagons so it's a little bit under A4 size but it does mean to say that I've been able to remove the holes from this edge and the holes from this edge and make straight edged pieces with them so it worked out very nicely if I made these individual pieces and interlink them together in other words if I just drew one piece and then put them on here and interlink them all together the tooling would be a terrible mess and we'd be repeating lots and lots of tracks so what I've tried to do is minimize the track overlapping by breaking the job down and let me just show you I'm going to hide certain parts of it so you can see what I mean so here I've hidden, hidden the green parts and as you'll see there's a track that starts at the top left here and runs all the way down to the bottom it doesn't break out because I don't want these to break out I don't want them to fall apart um, and then it runs all the way back up again so these are individual tracks at this moment in time which hopefully will be the first thing that I'm going to cut and then we've got a layer with all these little cross pieces on them so we want to cut those secondly so that the pieces don't fall out until we want them to fall out it's this green shape here around the outside is the size that we finally want to cut the photograph out as both of these pictures I have saved them as DXF files and we will then go and import them into um, RD Works. Right, well, we import our files from here. I've broken them down into two Jigsaw 1 and Jigsaw 2. So we'll import Jigsaw 1 first. And here it is. Now, in case there's a problem, what we'll do is to immediately change the color of this to something else let's make it blue 
so that when we import something else which will probably come in on a black layer as well it won't be confused so let's now do file import jigsaw 2 and I suspect that that's if I undo the handles that will appear as black which it has done let's bring this back to full screen so we can see what's happening to our page and there's our page on our work area all these dotted lines are the tracks that the laser head is going to follow to try and do this now I suspect that at the moment it's going to jump all over the place as we can see and there's all sorts of confusion going on across the bottom here so one of the things that's possible I believe is to sort out the tracks a little bit so edit cut property no we don't want that we can show path which is what we've done we can either remove the path or show the path and these are the paths we'll put a handle around the whole lot go to handle and something that we've got up here is cut optimize oh we can cut it in the order of the layers which is what we want to do blue layer first and then the black layer which is great so that means that we can separate out these two layers in the way in which they're going to be cut and then it says cut from inside to outside well I don't know whether that makes any difference what are the choices that we've got single inner to single outer single in that find cutter port I don't know what that means we could switch that off and see what happens block handle height I've got no idea what that means start point optimize so let's click this a moment and watch what happens to this pattern that's in the background here greatly simplified so that's a great move so what I'm now going to do is to just see how this is going to cut so we'll go up and look at preview and we'll run this I've got it running at maximum speed simulate speed I've gone from 0.1 to 10 so it's already already running fast so let's see what happens no we don't want that to happen but we're happy with that to happen that's great as cutting those lines first jumping around a bit cutting the green lines and what I'm slightly worried about there is chunks of the puzzle falling out before they've been cut okay this outer frame here remember was our A4 page marker we'll hide our track lines because we don't really need those we'll click on this blue outer and hope that we can delete that without deleting all the blue stuff on the inside let's just see we try a delete excellent so we've been able to delete that outer track so this is the puzzle that we want to finish up with and we finally want to separate it out this outer frame here and turn that into a different color now I think we'll turn that into red if we can which we have done separately which is great because we want to cut the blues first then we want to cut the black horizontals then we want to chop the whole lot out when it's finished this is pretty good so far the most amazing thing was that when I brought the two DXFs in they overlaid on top of each other that's an interesting point to remember we're going to cut cardboard uh, we want an output for the blue yes speed 50 millimeters a second I think that's quite fast there's quite a lot of complicated shapes here I don't think we need to go any faster than that um, process mode is cut power in the absence of anything else I've set this to 50 50 and we'll leave it at that let's check the black layer because the black layer has got to be set exactly the same parameters because we're still cutting the same cardboard and finally the red layer we do want an output yes 50 for the speed it is going to be cut and 50 50 for the power again okay so first of all we will save these files both as a drawing file and then we need to save it as a machine file 
Well here we are at the machine again. Um, I've got the program loaded, we're all ready to run. I've got a small piece of the cardboard that I'm going to use here as a test piece. If you remember I said I was concerned about pieces falling out. Well hopefully to stop that what I've done, I've put a piece of steel plate underneath here. There's no chance of it ever cutting. Um, the worst that's going to happen is it might scorch the back of the puzzle but I don't think it's even going to do that. In this particular instance if you look carefully at the red dot you'll see that it isn't sitting all that flat. So what I'm going to do is just put a small piece of um, metal down there that will hold the whole thing flat. I could stick it down with tape but for the moment that's good enough. So let's have a look to see whether or not we've cut through and what damage we've done to the back. We haven't really cut through. We've cut through the front part but not the back part. So we either need to go slower or increase the power. Okay, let's try the same thing again. I've decreased the speed now to 30. Need some air. getting there but it's still not completely cut through. That's probably because this is a corrugated cardboard and the air gap in between is causing all sorts of problems. Now I've just made a very interesting discovery about the online editing. I thought I was editing things here uh, online um, but in fact you have to be very careful how you do your editing because Although I thought I'd changed this blue layer to something like 30 millimeters a second and 80% power and 80% power, you can see that they've remained at 50 millimeters a second, which is the layer that we're trying to modify, and 50-50. So, but one, one of them has changed. So it's only, you, what you have to do is, to, I believe, you'll have to modify this blue layer now and we will come down with the ZU button to the minimum power and we'll put the minimum power up to 80% and then we'll bring the ZU button down to the next power, minimum power and we'll take that up to 80% okay and now we've set those and we have to do enter enter set up success and sure enough we can see that the blue layer has now gone to 50 50 millimeters a second and 80 percent power so now we'll have to go down and do another enter again and this time we can choose a different layer which will be the black layer and we'll come down to the speed and we'll put that back up to 50 and at this point we have to press enter to secure those numbers on the black layer and sure enough there they are so now it looks as though I have got I thought I was just messing around with all the layers at once but you have to do them edit them one layer at a time and press enter Assist on. Run. We're still no better off than we were before, despite the increase in power. Change the settings to 20 millimeters per second speed and 80% power. Cut through nicely this time. Let me change the other layers to the same speeds. is it doesn't fall out the frame. Well that didn't work too well it's quite amazing isn't it? You would think that corrugated cardboard would work so well. The principle was good, the tooling worked but we haven't yet dealt with the problem of how to cut 
corrugated cardboard, which you'd think would be the simplest job in the world. <laughs>